So it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I'm really just going to jump straight into the products that Dwarven offers, which are, of course, lighting without wiring. And that's our first product was the Lamp Lighter 1, which you see there, um, into which you plug the fibres. And the idea really is conceptually very, very simple. All we do is take the lamp lighter, take a fibre, drill a hole, run it up into a building, you've got light. Take a, a light, alternative, a lamp, say, and you can run that down, the fibre down, into the lamp lighter. It couldn't be simpler. In fact, that's what I discovered from my own layout. So here's one of our lamps, uh, perched over the top of a, a Rolls Royce. Naturally, I had to have a Rolls Royce. I've given up thinking about owning one of those now, so this is probably as far as I'm ever going to get. Um, and here you can see it actually in situ with um, some of the buildings lit around there, some of the uh, swan neck lamps, there's a roundabout there, all the normal things, and an English um, crossing gate as well. Um, a little bit closer and you can get a better, better idea of the focus of this light um, onto the roadway. I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a moment. Well, you know, it's really great to just add lighting where you want. So you can see those guys in the picture there, they're digging in a road. And of course, they're always, um, we're always digging roads up and filling them in. That seems to be what goes on all, all the time, much to motorists' annoyance. But when I didn't have a light there, nobody really noticed it. But as soon as I popped a little light on there, boing, it really popped out. And of course, there's a little mini miner there uh, with a light shining on it. But you'll notice that, in fact, for the light, it's really a nice conical, about a 40 degree spread on that beam, unlike an LED, which is more typically about a 135 degree spread. Now, I took some of these to round to one of my friends uh, in the area, and Al Judy, and he actually um, took some of them uh, rusted them up, made them look um, older, um, and, and put them on his scenery. So that was rather fun. Well, of course, I have to have somebody to make these. And there's one of our dwarves. He's the youngest, Benjamin. And there he is making a, a set of swan neck lamps. And those are the ones that are around on quite a lot of layouts uh, around the world now. Well, one of the things I do like is an English pub. And... So I built one from scratch, just out of my own mind and so on. But I obviously wanted to put a whole load of lighting into it. So I did that. Um, and I wanted to put some lighting up into the trees because I love that sort of fairy lighting feel. And there we are, small fibers, just poke them up into a tree. Very simple. Um, but I also wanted to have some lighting on the um, underneath the umbrellas. So there was lighting on the tables. And again, very easy. Just put a fiber up there and I've got lighting. So that's the product that we came up with. And my second oldest grandson, or youngest grandson, I should say, is David. And uh, he does all the manufacturing now of those lamp lighter boxes. And so I thank him. He's one of our dwarves, as we call him. Paul McCarty, Enscaler, sent me some images, really nice scenery there. Um, and I love this one. There's a guy reading his newspaper underneath the light just outside the library. And this is an interesting scene, I think you'd admit. Paul's actually worked on some uh, moon lighting um, so that uh, he's, he's really got sort of an ethereal effect there. It's, it's very, very interesting. Um, looks like a Thomas Kincaid type of painting uh, to me. Well, I got enthused recently to do some work on my own layout. I rarely get any time to do that. Um, so I decided to put in some of the globe lamps along a waterfront. Um, and uh, then I just put some lighting into those cars. And so, and it was turned out to be a very, very simple job. Um, and the rear of those, I put four lights into the um, rear lights of that car and just painted them red. Um, and there we go. Well, in April, um, I was very grateful that Cody um, had put together um, so a two-page spread in that magazine where he'd taken some lights that had been installed but had never been lit and he just took them, pulled them out and put in some of the Dwarven lamps and again very, very quickly, which sort of demonstrated to him as well as others um, how quickly you can 
for the night sin. Right, I'd like to show you something about lighting a church. So here's the church, and if I take that up, all we've got are three fibers, one millimeter fibers coming up. We've actually got some coffee stirrers stuck in there so as to keep the fibers fairly straight, and you can see it's very easy to move them in and out of there. Um, on the church itself, we've put some foil on the bottom, of, on the roof rather of it, um, and also where we've got the windows, we've actually uh, coated those so you can't see through the um, plastic. That's a typical problem with many of the models around. So the plastic tends to be rather thin. Of course, there's some gravestones attached to the side. Well, we'll put them back down so they can enjoy me sitting down there. And then we've got the effect of yep, the light on there. Now, one of the things you will notice is, in fact, that there's quite a bit of light on the front of this church and it's really coming from this little light down here. In fact, if I put my finger over there, you can see the effect of that. I think you can see that's quite attractive. So here is our Lamplighter product range. For the application, we need a light source with a very high intensity designed to feed that light into the fibers. So on the left-hand side is the Lamplighter 1, Next is the lamp lighter 2 that holds double the number of fibers and is brighter. And then we have double the brightness in our lamp lighter 2S, the supermodel. We are just introducing the lamp lighter flashing animation unit. So you can now animate your layout together with illumination from the lamp lighter 1 or 2. So let's switch gears now and move from illuminating buildings and streets and objects to animation to the Lamplighter FL unit. The unique feature of the Lamplighter FL is its ability to turn on and off individual optical fibers. So we can have either flashing or blinking lights. So now let's take a moment to look at the electrical connections to the Lamplighter flasher unit. Your lamp lighter has on its right hand side a section for detecting trigger inputs. And so, in fact, here it is. You can see there are eight individual detector inputs that are on that side, on the right hand side of your lamp lighter FL. And you can use a number of different ways to connect into this. You could actually use just wires with JST plugs on them. That's going to require you to do some soldering, which is fine. An alternative, though, is to be able to use this 8-port detector terminal block. Here you can just screw the wires directly into the terminal block, and then all you need to do is that then gets inserted into the lamp lighter FL, and those become the trigger inputs, the lower one being number 1 and the top being number 8. There's also a four port power terminal block that is used to provide power to the sensors you may be using. That then provides voltage for the sensors and that plugs into the left hand side of the lamp lighter FL. And that's shown more clearly now, as you can see, with some wires connected into it next to the voltage input plug for the actual lamp lighter FL. Useful to take a look at how this looks in terms of a wiring diagram. So here we go. So here is the lamp lighter flasher unit attached to two signal crossings and two detectors. The detectors connect to the power on the left hand side of the unit and are wired into the right hand side to trigger it. Well, and if you want to add sound, just wire it up the same way as the detectors. So you've seen the unit flashing. Now you can see it blinking on the tall building as an aircraft warning light. So I'd like to show you how to hook up your lamplighter flasher unit to your digital command control 
on your layout. And the first thing we need to do is just connect the wires from your DCC on your layout to the lamp lighter flash unit as shown by that red arrow. The next thing is we're going to go to the control module and it's set for 03, which is the typical address of an engine that you've just bought and it's the default address for the lamp lighter flash unit. So we're going to use that to control the lamp lighter flasher and what we're going to do then is use some of the keys to turn the lights on or off. And so that's what I'm going to do with my thumb, as you'll see. So the light is off in that building. Press the button and the light goes on. Press it again, goes off. Press it again, back on. Very, very simple to do. Here is our packaging for the railroad crossing, and this is what you receive if you buy it from us. ...of a railroad crossing, putting the fibers into the layout, and then just pushing the shaft down into the 1 8 inch hole that's drilled for the HO railroad crossing. So seating that down in there. Next, we need to attach the fiber pins, and we do that by just pushing those onto the fibers, like so, and then those get inserted into the lamplighter flasher unit. So I have installed a detector, and we turn that on, and you can see the railroad flashes come on, as well as the bell sounding. So here is a side-on detector, and a little housing that we've made for it, which just slides over the top of the detector to hide it when it's mounted onto the layout, and here it is mounted beside the track. Well. Let's take the cover off it, and there it is, just shown being mounted there. And again, there's the cover. It really looks like a sort of a pillbox, electrical outlet, if you like, or electrical box. And that just slides over the top and hides it. So here we have a vertical detector. Notice the sensors are right on the end of it, pointing up. And that gets mounted underneath the track right there. And that's what we actually saw earlier on. So now let's see what happens when we get a train uh, moving ahead oh, in front of the uh, sensors. So here we go, you see the small sensor there? Yep, okay. And the crossing is on. So it's a very simple system to put together, very simple to wire up, and should be very straightforward for you to work with. So now I have to let you in with a little secret, and there it is, there's the ding-dong as I call it, that's the soundboard, that's hidden away, just there. So I just put it in underneath one of the houses that's near to the railroad crossings, and it works very well as you can hear. So thank you to all you TrainFest visitors, and as a special thank you, we'd like to offer you a 10% discount for the next week so that you can enjoy lighting without wiring from Dwarven Enterprises. Enjoy the rest of the program. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Go to Dwarven, that's D-W-A-R-V-I-N dot shop slash train fest, all one word. Thank you.